Hey YouTube, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey It's a Good Life. I am so glad you're here because today we are going on a garden tour. Ready? <sighs> yeah. <laughs> so if we haven't met yet, my name is Natalie and I am a backyard farmer of sorts here in San Diego, California, Zone 10. Now I call myself a backyard farmer because I like to think of our small space in terms of a, a farm just sized down. So we have where we start seeds in our mobile greenhouse. We have where we grow those seeds in the gardens, the backyard gardens, the pollinator gardens, and the front yard gardens. And then we also have where we compost, which is using our worm farm. And I have different playlists on all of these different areas. So if you're looking to understand how you can kind of bring your farm dreams into a smaller scale into your backyard while you're dreaming and working towards the homestead, hopefully some of what I've created here for you proves helpful please do be sure to check those playlists out. On the note of becoming more helpful and hopefully more beneficial to you guys, have some kind of potentially sad news. I'm really excited about where we're headed and we're actually going to take a little bit more of a break from YouTube just so we can kind of keep that momentum going and continue to create where Hey It's A Good Life is going. I feel like the vision that I've had for Hey It's A Good Life is like finally kind of coming to fruition. It's taken a long time to get there, but yeah, I just, I feel like Tommy and I are so close. And so we're going to give ourselves some time off to kind of recalibrate and reorganize things a little bit because our ultimate goal is to serve you guys and to serve you well and to inspire you to grow big in your small space. And so we want to make sure that we're doing that and uh, doing it in a way that is helpful to you. So thank you for your understanding for our absence. I promise you we will be back. We're gonna take about a month off. We'll really kind of kick back into full gear come September. So uh, this will be the last video that we do for a while and I'm going to miss you guys, but please do know that we're coming back in full force with more videos, more ideas, and more ways to help you guys maximize your small space and keep dreaming those big dreams. All right, so if you guys are ready, let's go ahead and tour the garden. It looks a lot different from the last time that I saw you guys. So I have essentially like a giant keyhole garden. That is the shape of my garden. It's a big, I guess it's like a big C shape. And so I always call this bed, bed one. It's not a very exotic name. It's just bed number one. And in this bed, I've really simplified things. You guys are gonna see that this is a very different garden from the last time you guys saw it. Um, we've really simplified things to really focus on growing things well. I get really excited and I've wanted to grow lots of different things and I wanted to try a kind of permaculture biodiversity method in the last garden and I did and I'll link to that video here and it was great uh, but I wanted to see if there was any merit to kind of just narrowing things down and focusing on a select few items and so in these different beds you'll see what we have growing. Essentially our main crops right now are beans, corn, and tomatoes. And one of the biggest things that I'm learning right now is the importance of succession sowing. And so right here is my latest planting of beans and they're doing really well. They're all setting flowers, getting ready to produce a lot of fruit. These beans are a bush, I'm sorry, a stringless bush bean by Burpee. And I'm kind of wondering, some of you guys have written in and suggested that potentially it accidentally got crossed uh, just because some of them have gotten so long almost like they're extending as pole beans would and i really wanted bush beans because i don't really have infrastructure to grow things up and you know that is one of the things that i've learned in this garden is that it's been great to have these beds be so tall and really pretty back friendly for the most part however when it comes to growing things vertically it does pose a little bit of a challenge because now you know, you've got things even farther in the air if you're using, you know, cattle panels or T posts or what have you. And, you know, it can catch wind. It's kind of hard to jerry rig them onto the beds. And so I really wanted a bean that would grow as a bush bean. And I seem to have gotten some kind of mix. I don't, I'm not totally sure, uh, but this is just a strainless bush bean and I love green beans. So I'm really excited to have these here. Um, another lesson that I've learned here is to make sure you harvest these young because otherwise they get pretty tough. And behind the beans, I have corn. And this is early bantam corn. And I just love growing corn because 
it's such a conversation starter. So as somebody who's kind of like secretly on this mission to encourage other people to grow food, I love that my neighbors can see me growing corn. In fact, I have a neighbor over here, we call her Miss Patty. She is so sweet, we love having a relationship with her. And she likes to peek over the fence and see our sunflowers and our corn. And it's just such a great conversation starter with her and with other people too. I, I love inviting people into the backyard and just saying, hey, you know, welcome to the garden. And they see corn growing and they're like, what, you can grow corn? I'm like, yes, you can grow anything. So I love growing corn, not only because it's delicious, uh, but I am hoping to apply some of those lessons that I've learned along the way as well. When it comes to pollinating corn, I did not plant them very well last summer. And so I'm hoping that I planted them close enough together this season to actually get, you know, a full kernel, full cob, full, full cob situation full of kernels. I don't know how you say that. Um, but in the past it was like, it wasn't completely pollinated all the way. And so anyway, hopefully we planted these close enough together. Fingers crossed that all is well. Again, this is early bantam corn. We'll see how it does. I went ahead and left this chard here to see how it would do. And this chard is from my winter garden and it's still here going strong, a little bit eaten by some pests which is a good thing, you know, we want to know that pests like your stuff. If they don't, there's a, probably a problem. Uh, and it's actually doing really well, continuing to produce, which is really surprising because a lot of leafy greens don't do well here with the hot temperatures in the summer. So that's pretty cool. So here we are at the entrance of my garden. And one of the requirements for this garden when I built it was I needed an archway entrance. I have longed for archways in the garden for so long. And one day very soon, I'm going to get way more archways than this just single archway. But for now, it is my beloved archway and I love to grow lots of different things on it. And one of my favorite things to grow is this vining black-eyed Susan. It is so beautiful. Its leaves are soft, like lamb's ear kind of. And its flowers invite lots of pollinators to the garden. And it's something that I can take uh, Ruby out here and have her feel it. And she just loves to feel it. So it's really fun and sensory for kids. Uh, and it's just beautiful. It grows like wild in this uh, hot climate in August, July, August, it really goes off. And so it's doing really well right now. Uh, and I love having it on the archway. On the other side of the archway is a total mess. We have nasturtium, we have cucamelon, and we have zucchini rampicante, I think and kind of even a tomato competing for space. So I need to do some work to clean that up a little bit. All sorts of things growing together, which my little permaculture loving heart absolutely adores. So I think it's actually really cool, but I do know from experience that it will be important to thin that out so that they actually have a chance to get big and set some fruit. Welcome to the inside portion of my garden. Here again is that black eyed Susan and forgive me as we kind of work with the light, I will eventually show you everything here. We're working with nap time, we're working with sunset, we're making it work. Um, anyway, so here we are at the inside of my garden. I wanna show you the other side of bed number one. Welcome to the other side of bed number one. And as you can see, I have this tomato which is going absolutely wild. Uh, these are actually yellow pear tomatoes and Tommy and I really like growing these because his family had a hand in seed history here in California. They ran a company called the Haven Seed Company and they had a hand in developing the yellow pear tomato. And so every year that we grow tomatoes now, I try to grow a yellow pear tomato because it is kind of an homage, a tribute to our forefathers and a way to stay connected with that piece of history. Uh, now you'll see here that <laughs> My tomatoes are all over the place. So I really wanted a way to grow vertically and we are going to be installing that very soon. But unfortunately we did not install it uh, quick enough before the leads kind of got away from me. So I was doing a really good job of pruning off the leaders. I'm sorry, pruning off the little armpits, the suckers. And now I have leaders that are leaning out of the bed and I have suckers that are growing straight up. So my plan is to allow the leaders to kind of continue to do their thing out of the beds as they would in nature, but then I'm going to prune up these large suckers and hope for the best. Uh, again, all of these tomatoes are yellow pear tomatoes and I want to do another planting here soon of San Marzano. Again, I get really excited about lots of varieties, but I'm trying to 
use a different mentality this season and really pare things down to really harness my growing skills and uh, harness our skills as you know what does it take to kind of run a homestead and keep plants going and so lesson learned to us like you really need to have your infrastructure there for those plants before they get growing because once tomatoes get going they get growing so quickly so I'm excited to install those and we're gonna have a video on how to do that and how we're doing that here at least as well as a drip line video here really soon uh, but for now these are my tomatoes and they're they're doing all right <laughs> Oh, see, I woke up from my nap. Oh my goodness. I have two bottom teeth and one upper tooth coming in and today's been kind of a rough day. Oh. Yeah, you wanna show them your teeth first? You wanna show them those teeth? Give them a little peek. Say, mama, this is a garden tour, not a teeth tour. <laughs> All right, so I'm in between bed number two and bed number three here. Bed number two is essentially the same thing as bed number one. We have yellow pear tomatoes, early bantam corn, and oh, no beans in this one actually. We did have some beets that I pulled and an experimental uh, Swiss chard, which is also doing well. So that's kind of the update there. Let's check out bed number three. Bed number three, back to that point on succession sowing, bed number three is full of old beans that I've let go to seed so that I can collect those seeds and hopefully have a more acclimated seed for the next season. Um, I've learned so much about just making sure that you're planting enough if you have the space granted. In a, in a garden like this, you know, we're not gonna be growing all of our own food just yet. Oh, not comfy, not comfy. People go, why is she pulling her ears? I go, that's her thing. Oh, not comfortable. Um, so anyway, granted in a space, space like this, we're not gonna be growing all of our food all year long, although we can grow quite a bit. Uh, but I'm learning so much about succession planting and the importance of just making sure that you plant enough beans so that you're not just picking one or two beans. And so this year I planted a ton of beans in hopes for a really big green bean harvest. Harvested a ton off of these behind me, enough to share with my mama and left those beans with her. And then now we'll be focusing kind of again on that bed number one that has the uh, latest planting of green beans, right? Okay, very cool. Uh, the corn behind me is again that early bantam corn. I have one planting of another kind of corn I believe it's country gentleman and I'll show you guys that and I actually have a question for you guys if you have uh, any feedback for me I'd love your suggestions on what exactly is going on over here in bed number five Hello from bed number five where some of our corn has completely toppled over now I'll show you guys what I'm looking at as far as the roots go I'm wondering if there's some kind of pest that attacks the roots or if we had like maybe an aerial pest or something or a bird, like a heavy bird maybe landed on it. I don't know, but my corn has toppled over and I am so sad because I really love this country gentleman corn and I really wanted to have some. And I just don't know if it's gonna happen now, but I'm thinking I'm gonna leave it and see what happens. Okay, and last but not least, we've got the 14 foot bed here, bed number four. And if you guys remember from, a, I think it was the family garden tour, I showed you guys that I planted these berry bushes in different parts of the garden to see where they did the best. And I learned so much from that. I planted these um, in, hey, ants, get away. Um, I planted about four different berry bushes in different parts of the garden. And one of the most interesting turnouts was this berry bush. This is the Schwartz and it's in, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but I will put it on the screen here. Um, I planted this here, and it's such a testament to finding the right growing spot for your plants. Um, things that grow in this area tend to, I think it's atoliate is the right word, where they essentially grow bigger, not necessarily stronger. It's kind of a stress response to not getting enough sunlight. So this plant got really big, all of its berries were really big, all of its leaves were really big, and it just was kind of awkward and strange. And then its buddy here in the corner, which you can't see at the moment, um, was doing really, really well for a long time, and it seemed like that corner of the garden was actually the best spot for this plant. And now it's completely dead and dried out, which I think is shame on us because um, our drip line is a little 
finicky right now so I think it just didn't get enough water but it's just so interesting to me that you can plant different things in your garden in different spots and they can fare so differently um, the the ones that I planted in pots are very small they are not doing very well and the ones that I planted in beds number one and two also just didn't really like it there uh, I think that there was too much competition for them and they eventually just kind of petered out and now we don't have berry bushes in beds number numbers one and two anymore and that's just how it goes so really kind of an interesting experiment for me as a growing gardener as a I guess intermediate gardener at this point oh. So yeah, if you've been following along with some of these garden tours, there is an update on our berry bush. And also another update is that I don't really like the flavor of these berries. So it's another thing that's good to kind of experiment and just see, you know, what do you like? Sometimes you might try something new out of excitement like me and decide that you don't like it. And that's totally fine. And sometimes that's just how it goes. Not a whole lot to say on the pollinator garden. Other than I think we really need more consistent watering out here, this area really does tend to struggle with so much sun and so much heat in the summertime. And I think if it had better watering, better water situation, it would fare a lot better. But as you can see, I mean, things continue to grow. I just don't think they're growing very vigorously and I would love to see that transformed. And so that is one of the projects that we aim to finish in our quote unquote time off. We're still gonna be working and filming things uh, and so we wanna be able to film for you guys how we're setting up our drip line out here. Um, and this area is area that needs some love. And last but not least, we have the greenhouse and the worm farm, which is totally a mess right now. Uh, but I wanted to just show you guys that there's nothing going on in the greenhouse right now, which is really strange. I just cleaned it out and we're going to be starting new plants for fall here very soon. And the worm farm is doing great. A lot of you guys ask me, you know, what do I do with my worm farm in the summer? How do I keep it cool? And my answer for our climate in our area is I literally just always put it on the north facing side of any fence that we have to try and protect it a little bit from the sun. And that seems to work just fine. The worms are happy. And the thing to remember too about worms is that they have their own kind of mucosal lining and all of those castings. And that is a really protective barrier from heat fluctuation. And so they also have other methods of protecting themselves from heat, like burying themselves further into the cool um, bedding and castings layers. So just keep in mind, like worms know what to do. If you've got the right conditions going for them, they're going to be just fine. And all you can do is your best and just kind of apply yourself and see what works best for you in your area. If you live in a hot climate like me, I always just say, that's exactly what I say. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep, that's exactly what I say. I always just say, keep them on the north facing side of a, of a wall, you know, or your home, and that should be good enough. Ours are doing great and ready to help uh huh. Ready to help. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> you love that. Ready to help fertilize the gardens here real soon. And that is it. That concludes our garden tour today. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are really going to miss you guys, but I'm really excited for where we're taking Hate's a Good Life and what we are coming back with as we launch into fall. Thank you so much for being here. If you like videos like this or you want to see more from us, definitely hit that subscribe button, hit that like, leave us a comment, and def definitely come back and see what we're coming back with here in September. And we can't wait to see you guys then. Thanks so much for joining me on today's garden tour, and we'll catch you guys very soon. Bye. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs>